So we're going to go through the uh, June 2017 paper for rings, polymers and analysis. This is from the uh, legacy OCR specific specification. However, the content um, that you're taught hasn't changed much. So these are uh, great questions to practice because uh, current, currently we don't have many past papers for the new specification. Uh, right, so this is a slightly odd question to start with. Uh, and it tests your uh, ability to draw in 3D. Um, so I'm going to draw two benzene rings. Um, and so for the first one, the Keckley model, remember that shows alternate single and double bonds, uh, like so. But for the um, delocalized model, you have got a ring of electrons above and a ring of electrons below the ring, like so. Uh, so this one is straight out of your notes, um, so nice and easy. The um, uh, first one that we can talk about is that all the carbon-carbon bond lengths are actually the same length when you look at real benzene. However, you would expect, um, if we looked at the Keckley model, for the double bonds to be shorter, than the single bonds. However, when we look at the X-ray diffraction um, for benzene, you can see that all the carbon-carbon bond lengths are exactly the same, and the length is in between the carbon-carbon double bond and the carbon-carbon single bond. The final one is the hydrogenation um, of benzene is different than expected. Um, if you go back, you would expect... Oh, sorry, that's a really bad benzene. Um, if you go back to Keckley's model with the alternating single and double bonds, um, and we did three, uh, added three hydrogen molecules to make cyclohexane, you'd expect that number to be three times the hydrogenation of cyclohexene, but it's actually not. Um, it's much less, and that's because benzene is more stable than we'd expect it to be. The first part of uh, question B um, is asking me to predict the car number of carbon NMR peaks for compound A. So we'd expect to see one, two, three, four, five, six peaks in the carbon NMR of compound A. So we're going to look at how we make uh, compound A uh, from ethyl benzene now, and they want the mechanism for this. So you'll notice you are adding on a chlorine atom. So if this is ethyl benzene here, um, we have got to add a chlorine to that. So the first thing we're going to do is we need to generate our electrophile where you take aluminium trichloride that reacts with the chlorine to produce Cl plus plus Al Cl for minus. Okay and then the Cl plus comes along here the electrons come out of the benzene ring to um, form a bond with the chlorine you form this intermediate here where you have the plus charge, like so. You've still got your ethyl group attached to that carbon, but now you have a hydrogen and a chlorine attached there. And so the hydrogen is going to be lost as H plus to give you back your, uh, well, to give you your product, like so, Cl, like so, plus H plus, and then finally, the H plus reacts with the AlCl4 minus to give me AlCl3, so it produces my catalyst plus HCl, like so. If you look at reaction two, that's nitration. So the reagents and conditions is you use concentrated nitric acid and concentrated sulfuric acid for that. 
So we've got a nice mole question now. So let's give this one a go. Um, it's told me I've got uh, 2.65 grams of ethyl benzene being converted into compound B. Um, and I form 2.31 grams of compound B. So first thing I'm going to do is work out the moles of compound B, uh, which is going to be 2.65 divided by the molar mass of ethyl benzene, which is 106, and that comes to 0 0.0250. Then let's work out the moles of compound B, 2.31, divided by the molar mass of B, which is 151. That comes to 0 0.0153. It's a one-to-one -one reaction, so I expect to get 0 0.0250 moles of compound B. So my percentage yield is going to be uh, 0 0.0153 divided by 0 0.0250 times by 100 um, to convert into percentage, and that gives me 61.2%. Well, question two then. Benzene 1,4-diamine can react with acids to form salts. Um, how can it do that? Well, uh, you'll obviously know that the nitrogen atoms here and here um, they both have a lone pair of electrons on them, and therefore they can accept a proton. Uh, right, so benzene 1,4-diamine can be prepared by the reduction of 1,4-dinitrobenzene. What condi conditions for this? Um, this is tin and concentrated HCl for that. Right, an equation for that. Now, for this, you've got to be uh, a little bit careful. So, uh, remember you have got two amine groups on here. So what we need to do is, for one, it takes six hydrogens, but because I've got two, it's going to take 12 hydrogens to do that. Um, and rather than uh, forming two waters, I'm going to form four water molecules like so. So a condensation polymer, um, that's formed when monomers join to form a polymer with the elimination of a small molecule. Right, so to draw the repeat unit of Kevlar, um, we're starting with benzene uh, 1,4-dicarboxylic acid. So here we go. And then I've got C double bond O, but then I'm going to draw the amine group like so. Whoops. Then another one like so, and that will go on. And if I put a C double bond O on there, that will give me my repeat unit. Right, so they want the um, empirical formula now of the repeat unit for polyamide C. So the first thing we really need to do is work out what the repeat unit is. So if I start there, it's going to be all of this group, all of that group, um, and it's going to take in that there like so. And then hopefully you can see that this group will just repeat itself along. So if you count up um, those, uh, let's have a look. I have got a total of... 16 carbons, 30 hydrogens, 2 nitrogens and 2 oxygens um, and therefore my empirical formula is C8H15NO, like so. Right, so draw the structure of the two monomers. So for the two monomers, um, this is obviously going to be my poly, my diamine um, and this here will be my dicarboxylic acid. So is going to be NH2, then CH2, and I've got six of those with an NH2 like so. And then for the other one, it's going to be a carboxylic acid, CH2, 8, and then another carboxylic acid like so. Right, so we've got a carbon NMR here um, of compound D. It's told me that compound D reacts with Tollens reagents. So 
the first thing that I know is that compound D is going to be an aldehyde because it reacts with tolerance reagent. Okay, from my carbon 13 NMR, I have got four types of carbon in my molecule. So it's really important that you make those notes because that's giving you two marks, even if you can't quite work out what the structure is. So I know it's an aldehyde, so that group's got to be on the end. Um, and I've got a total of five carbon atoms, like so, but only four groups. So if I've got my um, uh, three in a line, and then if I have my two N groups, like so, H there, H there, H there, that will give me my correct number of environments. Right, so they've given me the product and they want me to uh, work out what the original carbonyl compound was here. And I've added a CN and I've added an H there. So uh, it's quite straightforward. You just remove that, remove that. And so the original carbonyl compound must have been C2H5, C double bond O, C2H5, like so. Um, right, for a mechanism, here comes uh, cyanide, lone pair on the carbon. Remember that this is delta plus, the oxygen is delta negative. This double bond breaks to go to the oxygen atom. So you're given this intermediate here, O minus CN, C2H5, like so. Um, and then you're going to have H plus like so. Um, let's put a lone pair on there. And then that's going to go to give you H plus uh, to form the bond with H plus, which gives you your compound.